my interest was in mathematics. I wanted to study mathematics. But once you graduate from mathematics, they send you in a village to teach some high school. And then I would have lost the Bucharest residency. I would never be able to come back to Bucharest. So mathematics was out. I found out that geophysics is the only discipline that uses math and physics as headquarters so in Bucharest. And uh, that's why I chose geophysics. It was a very good choice at the end. Professor Stefanescu was my idol, uh, who is uh, one of the pioneers in developing the resistivity method. He called me to become his assistant in Romania, in Bucharest, the University of Bucharest. And that was one of the most rewarding time in my life, really. Uh, Stefanescu was a fantastic person, a uh, brilliant geophysicist. And uh, if you look at the theory of resistivity method, Stefanescu's integral is the integral part of this uh, his world renowned geophysicist. He taught me one thing that was extremely um, instrumental in my success later on. He taught me how to attack a problem. He was a brilliant mathematician. He would never sit down and solve a problem mathematically first. He would think about it. He would think on physical reason and say, the solution I should get should involve a Bessel function, should involve this and that and that and that. And then he would sit down and prove mathematically the, the exact expression. Actually, I keep his picture here. Is there? And I look at it anytime I, I need an advice. I say, look at it. We took advantage of a United Nations uh, law that allows families that were separated by war to be reunited. So we applied to reunite with our phantom family in Lebanon. From Lebanon, I wrote a number of companies asking for a job. Lo and behold, Aero Service Corporation in Philadelphia offered me a job uh, in 1960 for $8,000 to come to Philadelphia. Now, after several months in Lebanon, they checked our background to make sure we are not Russian spies. Or so I arrived in New York, penniless, without any money. And uh, I didn't know that Aero Service would pay my way to Philadelphia, because in Romania, when they give you a job, you pay your way to go there. So I went to Columbia University to see if they can help me find a temporary job to make money to go to Philadelphia. And over there was Professor Jack Neff, who is now deceased, and Marit Talvani, who knew of my papers. And they asked me, why don't I uh, stay and take a, a PhD program? And I told them that I would love to, but I have no money. They said, how much money do you think that you need to leave? I said, what, $100 a month? They told me, we pay $660 a month, our graduate student. Is they okay with you? So I stayed at Columbia. I forgot about the job in Philadelphia. So it was a, a real lucky coincidence to, to, to end up at Columbia and get a PhD. While still at Columbia, I got um, Dr. Arthur Brandt, who was the director of Newmont, wrote a letter to the department head asking for a student with a good math physics background. He recommended me, and uh, I got called for an interview. And I got hired by Newmont. Newmont. And I worked for Newmont for 31 years. Uh, Dr. Brandt was another, I don't know if you know about him, if you heard of him, but he was another giant in geophysics, basically. He's a Canadian. And uh, uh, the way he was professor at the University of Toronto, Newmont hired him after the war to go and look to see what techniques are declassified by the military to maybe can be used for exploration. And he was the one who recognized the IP method. It was the Navy had developed a technique which is a precursor of IP to detect underwater mines. They developed this technique to put current and see current uh, in the in the water and then turn off the current and see if you get a decaying voltage afterwards. So Dr. Brandt immediately recognized that that can be used for porphyry copper, which are again disseminated sulfides. And he was an extremely resourceful person. He didn't do himself as much, but he created the atmosphere for people to work. 
but he always used to get people, motivate them. And uh, Newman developed the IPM method, developed time domain methods. For a company to develop two of the methods that are still the mainstay of geophysical exploration, that's quite remarkable. There were other techniques too developed uh, under Dr. Arthur Newman had the critical mass of people. Uh, we had really, I was very fortunate to work with a fantastic group of people. Fantastic group of people. Maury Davidson was superb. He later took over after Dr. Brandt as the director. Maury Davidson was a superb engineer, <coughs> electrical engineer. He understood the physics, everything else, very good. Callan Barnett was another person that worked. George McLaughlin was a Canadian was a, a, one of the best electronic instrument designers that I knew. And Bill Dolan, another big, big name. So we had, um, plus a number of other people, we had an, a really a good group. I think university research does make a lot of sense for many companies. Because they, the companies are now governed by financial analysts. What happens in three months? That's a, a long term, I don't see anybody that like Newman did a five year project at half a million dollars at that time, which is like five million today. I don't think, think anybody does that today nowadays. Amira was a, was a success story and uh, that good funding. Uh, it does make sense to pull the resources, especially nowadays when everything is much more expensive, and uh, um, make, some, like, make a couple institutes or something, whatever institute you want to call it. Uh, or Geophysical Institute that does research uh, that will help all the mining companies that contribute to it. Makes a lot of sense. I retired from Newmont in 1997 and uh, I had invitations from all around the world to go and teach and do research. In the meantime, Phil Robick, he was the Dean of the Geophysics Department, asked me for lunch and asked me to come and teach at the School of Mines. So I joined the school of mines and that was, that's a good move, that's a good move.